What's up, Zoners? This is Tyler, Big Turd Ward, and Jason, the lucky bastard youth of coming at you live from the West Coast. And this is the Fantasy Red Zone. Today, Jason, we've got news. We've got a secret start of the week that is almost guaranteed to be on your waiver wire. I might have two secrets, Jason. Two secrets. We have a start and a sit, our play and pause for each position, man. So stick around for that. We're gonna, hey, I, I'm supposed to go over what we did last week. I know I did well on my sits. I think I did good with one start. So, man, three for four. Stick around, dude. Hang out. Uh, hey. And we need, Jason, before we go over anything, we need to tell the public to help us because we need your help, man. We need you to like, we need you to subscribe, to push us out. We need to expose, man. We're trying to expose ourselves, and nobody's watching. Yeah, but if you're watching this and you made it this far, please hit the subscribe, press the like. We'd like the likes. Leave us a comment. Let us know about these starter sit Players, if you have any questions about start or sit for your players, let us know in the comments below. Uh, we're also on the radio on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and we also have a Patreon. If you feel Shout like, out. Just, you know, okay, go on. Shout out to Carter Mario, man, and Harold Corman. It's easy to shout out our Patreons, man, because we have two of them. Please join. It'd be amazing. They're amazing. Dude. Anyways. <laughs> and, hey, thank you for listening to our last episode, if you did. Again, we recorded it, went through the whole damn thing an hour out of our lives. Jason's got kids and a roof over his head. All kinds of stuff he's got to take care of, man. I'm working a, I, I've got a job just to pay off this laptop, all right? Uh, and it did not record our video. So thank you for listening to our last thing. If you like that, there is Spotify, dude. So that was just a free sample for you. That's why we did it. <laughs> you got a little picture of behind the scenes of our last video that we tried to do and we didn't and it didn't record remember dude that was that pit that was like the picture of that it was like another instinct where we yeah, uh re recorded for a whole hour and it didn't it didn't pan out we couldn't post it before you make any content please check to see if your microphone is muted or not i did not jason was concerned with it i said don't worry but don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> all right man let's get in to the news for use. First off, man, I am a Moster owner. And uh, I was like, man, what was I singing today? Anyways, dude, Moster out versus Bills on Thursday. And Mike McDaniel says they're going to see how it plays out with A-Chan. This fool is listed as questionable. So, Jason, if Jalen Wright or, J uh, J how's to say, Jeff Foxworthy? <laughs> what? Jeff, Jeff Wilson Jr. is available on your waiver wire, Jason. Who you picking up? Um, Jeff Wilson. And that's probably the boring answer, Jason. But you know what? Uh, right. They care more about than electric running back play is um, pass protection. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Tua, you saw him, dude. Waddle and Hill, I think, had 100 yards last game. They that's how they that's how they want to play and stuff like that. So they're they're going to keep Jeff, Jeff Wilson Jr. in there most times, I would bet. And then, but you know what? Jalen Wright is a great pickup for maybe the second half of the year because Moster and Achan are already injured, dude. But halfway through the year, maybe Jalen Wright can start picking up some of this pass protection stuff and get, you know, maybe 15 carries a game or something and explode. So yeah, I yeah. do like both, but yeah, I, I, I would rather get Jalen Wright just to hold on to him. Yeah, he, uh, he had the fastest, you know, uh, miles per hour in the first like 10 yards. The combine, right? Like he's just, he's already there. Yeah, explosive, I mean, just like a chan. And then you have Isaac Garindo, dude, who I really like. The fast guy for behind Christian McCaffrey. So there's a couple fast guys in positions with injured running backs right now. Uh, Jason, did you see Jake Ferguson? He said his uh, on on a scale from one to ten, his pain was a ten that day. Now it is a one. Almost can't feel it. He said it was a bone bruise on his knee or something like that. So Jake Ferguson survives. So, uh, yeah, people underappreciate. I've, I've heard all kinds of stuff about people trading away Jake Ferguson for almost nothing this last week. Jake Ferguson should be, should be, I don't know, top seven tight end play going forward. Yeah, just because it's going to hurt him to ride a bike doesn't mean he's not going to be able to play here pretty well in a couple weeks. Just imagine without bone bruise, Tyler, then you're on a bicycle. <laughs> when you say bone bruise and bicycle, I was thinking of Mac off of uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Remember that that? That bike that he made himself. Of course, I will never forget you off that moment. <laughs> it's motivation. Uh, say it's motivation. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I'm hot. I'm tired. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
All right, Jason. Uh, McVeigh saying Puka could miss more than four games. Well, no shit. All right, you're you put him on IR. That's at least four games. So that is no news to me. But I do want to know how do you feel about the wide receivers? I did pick up Whittington, but then I dropped a I dropped him before this show for a Don A. Mitchell. We'll talk about him in a second. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, Cooper Cup is going to tear it up. And then who you got? Uh, you got Demarcus Robinson. He get and Tyler, he get yeah, the touchdown. And Tyler Johnson, who's like, who's like five. He's been in the league for five years, three different teams. Tyler Johnson had that great run against the Lions. It was like right when I'm seeing that, I'm like, oh shit, is this the player to get? Is this the player to get? You took off your glasses, Jason. You're all. This is awesome. This you is awesome. Back on. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Nick Sirianni, dude. Uh, so yeah, I actually like grabbing Jordan Whittington because I just think he needed. He actually got a touchdown call back. Uh, he just needed a rushing uh, touchdown. Yeah, rushing touchdown. But give him a week of practice, dude. You saw him in the preseason; it was crazy. So I actually really like taking a flyer on Jordan Whittington this next week. I just don't have it, dude. I'd have to drop Yoshivas or something, and T. Higgins is still – is well, you know, speaking of which, no, T. Higgins is not practicing Chivas. today. So it's like I don't want to drop Yoshivas because Chivas. there is a chance he is a thing soon as soon as, uh, as soon as the Bengals' offense starts hitting the ground or whatever. So I'm having a tough time with all this right now. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what to do. I asked the guy making me a hamburger what to do, and he did not know today. Uh me and him, this, there's a guy, Jason, in the mountains. I go to this place. We talk fantasy football. He actually sat across the table from me and told me all about his draft. I don't think he's even subscribed. I tell him to subscribe. Come on, dude. I thought you were talking about he didn't know how to make a burger. You're like, dude. the guy that makes a burger asked me how to, he doesn't know what oh. to do. Oh, my God. He's dude. probably in the wrong profession. You go there. You get the black burger. and blue. The black and blue. And it is good, man. Bacon blue cheese. Holy shit. Oh, yeah, dude. They cut the tomatoes so thin that I actually eat them. Oh, oh. All right. Uh, anyways, anyways, Rome, Rome Adunze, Jason, still day to day with MCL. Keenan Allen sitting out practice Wednesday, which is we're recording this on a Wednesday, with that same heel injury. With that same heel injury, Jason, he's still got like all those targets. But they are going against Houston, dude. They need him. They need him. But you know who's looking really good right now to me? DJ Moore. If Caleb ever comes around, dude, all these fools are injured, man. So. <laughs> DJ Moore, people were I was I was high on DJ Moore with three mouths to feed. If he actually comes around, dude, DJ Moore could be amazing. Right. Do you think he could probably hit off this week against the Texans? I'm I'm starting him, and I've got other people that I would right. love to start in his place, dude. So yeah. yeah. Well, it's either him or Christian Kirk or some of these other wide receivers I was talking about, but I think Yoshivas is gonna do well. Uh, no, Yoshivas has a bad matchup, that's right. Oh, we're talking about a little bit later. Christian Kirk's got a bad matchup too. Yeah, and that's I was. I remember looking at that new website. You know, against slot receivers, against the slot yeah. corners. I was like, oh shit, dude, they both have bad matchups. Yeah. So yeah. Anyways, and then um, moving forward though, yeah, Romo Dunze, you just have to hold on to because you're 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 hanging on to him for the second half of the season. Anyways, Keenan Allen, man, you got to hold on to him because uh, he might be getting the most targets on that team. Maybe who knows? Yeah. You and then our. Yeah, and it's like, if you can trade him, go for it. But I don't think anybody's going to trade for him uh, with that value that they're worth. T. Higgins, Jason, not practicing again today. I think I just told you that. Told you that. Josh Jacobs, limited in practice. Everybody's all t- afraid of it. Guess what, dude? It's Dude's Day. That's a thing on, um, on Reddit because everybody's like, you cannot believe how many. Jamar Chase, this, that, that, that last year. Not practicing on Wednesday. Not practicing on Wednesday. That is what it's called a Dude's Day. If you are an important part of the team, you don't practice. You are limited on Wednesdays, Jason. That's great because A Chan was limited today. <laughs> yeah, but his Perfect. is a little bit worse because he was he was injured. He was already injured. <laughs> right. Uh, well, that's good too because we're we're going to be talking about Josh Jacobs a little bit later. I was trying to trade for Josh Jacobs, and I have to. I've got to like. I don't know, dude. I'm like, am I freaking out over ETN? Like, would I trade ETN for Josh Jacobs and this and that? Would you trade ETN for Josh Jacobs, Jason? I'll take Josh Jacobs. That's what I'm like, dude, I know. I know. Think about right? in week two, you're already trading a second round pick for what, a third round pick, fourth round pick? Yeah, well, in my in my personal rankings, Josh Jacobs was the next running back up after right. ETN. <laughs> so, right, yeah. So, like, my personal rankings to where that, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's that's what the tough thing is. Anyways, um, Kenneth Walker, Jason, day-to-day, 
with abs, abdominal strain. That happened to him last year as well. I remember having him. Yeah, there's a bleak. His he just keeps are taking sheets. He just keeps forming a new muscle. He's getting a nine pack now. It's, it's hurtful, Tyler. When you, Tyler, when you get your nine pack, you'll understand. You'll understand. Until I've then, got a you four, just got... a four pack. I'm trying to work. On, I'm trying to get those bottom two to look like something. I just have like a one pack. It's just one pack. <laughs> I'm like the I'm like the Eagles, the birds, of, Eagles of Freedom from uh, you know it's always sunny, the wrestling trio right. from it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. All right, man. Last up, max speed for wide receivers, uh, rookie wide receivers. Max speed. Who do you think was number one, Jason? Um, worthy. He was number two, Adonai Mitchell, who is the same size as Brian Robinson, B- Brian Thomas. And people are freaking about how fast Brian Thomas is for his size. Adonai Mitchell, 20.8 miles an hour, dude. Is it, and apparently he was, he had like five targets. We talked about this. He was barely missed. Like he had some 60 yard bombs going on. So could have been a completely different storyline with him catching. If he got one of those touchdowns, dude, he would have been a top waiver wire pickup. So that's why I'm just picking him up, dude. Shane Steichen. I really, I'm, af- I'm afraid of Josh Downs, but Adonai Mitchell, dude, is huge. Josh Downs is not huge. And then uh, Brian Thomas, dude, 19.8 miles an hour. Xavier Worthy, 20.2. Lad McConkey, 19.7. That surprised me, Jason. He was faster than Malik Neighbors, Keon Coleman. And then this is surprising as well. Uh, I, all I heard all day was that Marvin Harrison Jr. was slow, 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 slow. 16.7 miles an hour was his fastest speed reach, Jason. Oh, damn. Michael Scott good. does that shit in his Michael. sleep. Yeah. Michael Scott is like, he's running 33 miles per hour, dude. He got nothing on these dudes. <laughs> All right, man. Okay. Uh, let, you ready to get into our starts and oh, yeah. sit, Jason? Well, I just want to kind of throw it out there, too. It looks like um, Christian McCaffrey is leaning towards another missed. Uh, oh, did I? Oh, shit, game. man. I, you know what? I, didn't, I don't think I read the second part of that uh, of that thing, did I? Ah, shit. I don't know where it is. Christian McCaffrey out. Yeah, where is that? I didn't even write it down. Oh, oh, he's limited in practice Wednesday. That's what I meant to put. Yeah, oh, I shit. Saw... I also I put the Rams that. moved two offensive tackles to IR, and they yeah. signed two other tackles. So, yeah, the Rams, dude. Kyron Williams is going to be the most affected by this. Matthew Stafford as well, but we'll talk about him in a minute. Jason, uh, but yeah. Pretty crazy, dude, that the Rams are already fucked in the offensive line. Yeah. I'm trying to see something. Yeah. I guess uh, T. Higgins was not spotted practicing today, too. So, Not spotted? He wasn't spotted practicing. Right. But A-Chan was. So I really hope A-Chan plays, if you can't tell. All right, Jason. I don't want his injuries to be happening already, okay? <laughs> don't do this to me, dude. All right. You know what? I was supposed to write this up, but we had the opportunity to record a little bit earlier today, so I did not have the time. Remember, if you want us to have more time for this, the only way it's going to happen, man, is uh, Patreon, liking, and subscribing, man. We need to just make money. As bad as that sounds. <laughs> yeah, time is money around here, around this house. And uh, yeah, dude. So I wanted to I wanted to go over our starts and our sits from last week, Jason. I did say to start Zach Ertz. I did not go. I like I said, no wide res- no wide receiver had more than 27, 20, 20, 20 yards receiving. So Zach Ertz was actually a smart play. Jaden McDaniel's just didn't throw the fucking ball, dude. Like nothing. So Zach Ertz moving forward, I do like for a targeted tight end. I said to sit Aaron Rodgers, and dude, I felt like sh- an asshole after that drive. Then it felt real good about it the rest of the game, Jason. That's nice. What does Zach Ertz get? Uh, dude, he got like, I think he got like 30 yards and four receptions or something. I mean, he probably got like, you know, at least like five points in PPR or something like that. Okay. Yeah. And I can't remember who I said, who, uh, who the other people I, oh, I said to start David Montgomery, dude. I said, this is the dude. And then what happened in that game, Jason? Jameer Gibbs got like four goal line carries in a row. And I was like, right. this is fucked, dude. This is fucked. And then uh, overtime, baby, paid off big time, big time. And, I, yeah. I, and then that means that I would have had a sit. I just gave you two sits. I wonder. I would have had to start a wide receiver, right, Jason? 
No, oh, I, said a, I, I, to... I said a sit Ayuk. And he he only got like two receptions, right? Yeah, that's right. Do... I said sit Ayuk and sit uh and sit Aaron Rodgers, start Zach Ertz, and start David Montgomery. I was three for four. Nice. Oh, 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 oh. The right stuff. Jason, when I say don't let me confuse you, what do you what would you say next? You confused me. Don't let me confuse you. I'm confused. When I let loose with well, I was don't let me don't let me confuse you. When I let loose with the Zuzi and rip right through your Azuzu. All right, Jason. Pew, pew. Well, 9-11 was today, and my first, you know what I listened to was uh patiently waiting from 50 Cent with him and <laughs> It's a good song. So some cowards fucked it with the wrong building. They met the hit hours. And yeah. I was like, I was like, you, I, see, I, you take some bacon, some pot, and you mix the bubble in the pot. Sprig a little bit of the angel, well, the angel dust. What the fuck did you got? You got the realest and illest killers. Okay. Yeah. See, dude, Sorry. I, I was thinking that all day today. And I was like, I thought it was, uh, you sprinkle a little bit of yellow, like yellow from um, NWA. It's angel dust, right? You sprinkle <laughs> a little bit like, of angel dust. got to be what it is. <laughs> I could be wrong, dude. I haven't heard that song in like, forever. Now I'm like, I got to listen to it. <laughs> but I have to listen to it dude, when we get I'm off there. Telling you, man, like the, it's they've got they got like a pulse beat going on with Eminem rapping. Yeah, sweet. It's one of the best songs ever. I know. All right, I'll Jason. That. Sorry, Such man. A good I don't song. know what the hell I'm even talking about, dude. Anyways, uh, yeah. So, Jason, your starts, your sits. Do you remember who those were? Uh, I, I know, I know. I said to start worthy. Yeah, I remember that. So to start worthy, and I said to start golf, and golf didn't do well. Golf, uh. Yeah, that's right. Because it was dome. Uh, it was a dome game. So. Yeah, and yeah. they he only scored like I think like thirteen points. He had like an interception, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you know in the overtime it was the same way. I'm like, okay, you know at least he got the ball. He could score another touchdown, dude. They <laughs> they just ran. They, David Montgomery came in and just ran, 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 ran. Touchdown! Oh, I'm like, damn. Not going to yeah, that's what it was. Don't let me lose you. I'm not trying to confuse you. All right, man. Uh, so, you know, we're going to be, uh, we'll we'll have all of our picks next week. We'll have more time, man. Be more prepared. I actually had to work a full day today, man. David Njoku, I said to sit him. Did you? I just stubbed my toe. I just stubbed my yeah. toe so bad. Dear God. All right, man. Um, we're going to start with... Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go quarterbacks, wide receivers, Jason, running backs, tight ends. Really? Okay. Yeah. So I think we should be able to flip flop this into a way where we're switching back and forth. So, well, first wouldn't... Pa- okay. No, Sorry. I wouldn't, because we we have to do quarterback, running back, quarterback. Right, running. right, right. So, anyways, moving forward, Jason, we're gonna start off with the quarterbacks, and I don't remember if I'm a start. Oh, I am a start, dude, and I've got my paper right here. So quarterbacks, Jason, you and I were talking about how hard it was for the start and sit on quarterbacks. Player pause on quarterbacks this week because it's like, you know, I was all looking for people playing against Indianapolis. I forget who's playing against Indianapolis, but some quarterback you don't want to start. Like all the quarterbacks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was like, who's going against Carolina? It's like Justin Herbert. He'll throw the ball 10 times. And it's like everybody with great matchups were quarterbacks that you do not want to play. So I was looking at my own roster, Jason, and this is kind of for me. All right. This is kind of for me. Matthew Stafford is my start. And uh, you're saying, didn't you just tell me he lost two tackles? <laughs> and Tyler, all you do is talk offensive line. What are you doing? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm trying to talk myself into this, man. So they got what offensive lineman from the Eagles. That's a good that's a good start. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, dude, so Matthew Stafford right now is quarterback 12, Jason. He's actually a number one quarterback, and I am starting him over my Caleb Williams. He is at Arizona, and I was just checking out to see if Arizona was in a dome or not. Jason, do you know if it's a dome or not? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's got a retractable roof with natural grass. Did you know that? Retractable grass. No, natural. Well, it, I think it is retractable grass, too. It is retractable right. grass. Dude, it's like one of the best stadiums ever. So, like, I was just thinking, like, the Rams, man, like, they need some good playing surfaces right now because <laughs> everybody's fucked. Uh, yeah. The second highest over and under for the week at 48 and a half. So, hey, man, Vegas is telling you right now, they still think Stafford and the Rams are going to score a ton of points. Dude, Arizona giving up the ninth most passing yards so far in 2024. There's been one game. 
but they gave up the 12th most last year. And uh, what was it? They played against uh, Matthew Stafford twice. They were both blowouts, Jason. The uh, the Rams actually blew them out both times. Week six, uh, Matthew Stafford only only scored 13 fantasy points because he didn't any, need to do anything. And the Adam second Williams. time... Dude, this, yeah, I know. In the second time, it was another blowout. He scored 24 and a half fantasy points. So that was like quarterback two on the week or something like that. So there is a huge variance here for a blowout. The good news is here, Jason, I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I actually think it's going to be competitive. Uh, I think the I think the point total is like it's like they're giving like Arizona three points or something like that. So it's, it should be a way closer game. Um, and dude, James Conner can run the ball. They're playing de- decent defense. And then what else was I doing? Oh, yeah, right here. Stafford blowout. Stafford was, what, 34 for 49, 317 yards, and a touchdown. One interception versus the Lions week one. And that was missing both tackles. He's still missing both, dude. But now they are on IR. So that was a difference there. So even with the terrible tackles, and all I heard about was um, Aiden Hutchinson. Because Aiden Hutchinson, dude, they showed his quarterback pressures. He was like at some historic rate that night. And, uh... Even there, dude, he threw over 300 yards. So, um, yeah, I am just – oh, yeah. And then in Stafford, though, in, what, 13 games versus, versus Arizona, 22 touchdowns, 10 interceptions in the 13 games. So he's played 13 games against Arizona. He's comfortable He's comfortable playing there as well. But, yeah, as far as that defense goes, man, like he's played the defense twice, and he's gotten – and he ha- he can be a top five quarterback, top two quarterback. Uh, now given that, I think week – what was that, week 12? I think that was with Puka and – and a healthy up uh, and a healthy cup ish. So that was a little different. But yeah, Jason, I'm just saying my start of the week is still Matthew Stafford. I project him to get 300 yards, two touchdowns, and to be a top 10 quarterback play for you and me. Yeah. Did you say how much he was projected? Oh, I, you know what? I think it's, I, I, I actually think it's like 18, dude. 18 points. Yeah. Yeah. That, like, dude. Uh, the last game, he threw the ball 49 times against the yeah. Lions. Did I, I, th- I thought I wrote that down. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, 34 yeah. for 49. And I was like, whoa, well, that's not going to happen again. And then seven red zone attempts. He was third. I was third last week. And then, yeah, he had 317 yards. I was second. Like, uh, you you even talked about this last year, Tyler. Matthew Stafford could be one of those players to throw in there because look at the weapons that he has. As long as he can have time to throw the ball, dude, as long as Cooper Cup is there at least, he's going to score you some points. Yeah, he's projected 18. Um, Caleb Williams projected 16. But I don't care about projections. I just know <laughs> that um, at least he's playing in a good environment, not crazy weather, natural grass, Cooper Cup, natural grass, Cooper Cup. Yeah, I, I just like that connection at least, and and he was dealing with the same situation last week. He did, he barely had Puka that game, Jason. So it's kind of the same situation. Yeah, should be a good game. Should be a good high scoring. How do you game. like that one though? Do you think that was okay? Because it was hard, man, to find a starting quarterback. I think the quarterbacks are they're difficult this week. Wait till you hear mine. Mine's so, gonna mine is crazy. So you're gonna sit? Who are you gonna sit, Jason? I'm gonna sit. Wee! Tyler, what's that? Oh, this is the gamble of of the week. Oh, oh my this, god, dude. I forgot about the gamble of the week. <laughs> this is Jason's riskiest pick of week two. My gamble of the week is sit to a Tago Viola. Tago Viola. Tago Viola. Tonga Viola. Tago Viola. Tonga. Tonga Viola. Viola. Tua. Sit Tua. I like the I like the names with only three letters in it. It's, it's easier for me sometimes. Yeah. So yep, my He's gamble like of the week. It. He has projected seventeen points, and he has only scored seventeen points once against the Bills, and that was in two thousand twenty-two. The last two games, he's averaged two hundred twenty-five yards and has two touchdowns and three interceptions. I didn't look at the rushing total, Tyler. You know why? Why? Because he's not a rushing quarterback. <laughs> Murray versus the Bills threw for 162 yards on 31 attempts and was sacked four times. If Tua gets sacked, it's over with, dude. Game over. And the Dolphins don't have the best offensive line. PPF has them ranked 18th overall. And a lot of Tua's points come from Tyreek Hill. 
But Hill's average from the last four games against the Bills are four receptions, 61 yards, and point five touchdowns. These divisional game these divisional games are normally tough, and it's a short week, and they might decide to run the ball more since the Bills are weaker against the run. I pause to a Tango Voyola. Yeah, Jason, I was actually listening to uh they were talking um it was on Colin Coward and they were saying how bad Tua stats are against Buffalo. And yeah. I was thinking maybe that's that's you know in cold weather at Buffalo, maybe or something. And then do you remember that game? It was like I think it might have been week one last last year when it went they had scored like the most points ever, right? Like it was winning two overtime. I can't remember. That was like the beginning of last year, and I was like, what about that game? Because that was versus Baltimore. Oh, that was versus Baltimore. That was not versus Buffalo. I think that was Baltimore. I don't remember, dude. I just remember the highest scoring game was either hit the Miami and Buffalo last year or Miami Baltimore. Shit was crazy. Um, so what you're telling me though is that historically Tua has done bad against um against uh the Bills, and that's the same thing I was hearing on talk radio today, Jason. So Yep. Tua and Hill normally well, I mean, Hill does, you know, a little bit better, but not worth, like, his normal projections, but yeah. Yeah, Tua and they got rid of a ton of people on that defense, Jason. Like, Poyer, Oregon State, dude, and um, some other people on there. Uh, Ch- Chadavius White, and uh, I can't remember. Do they went through all those people. Trade Reed and Ingram for Dobbins, question mark? Sharv, 6190. Would you trade Reed and Ingram for Dobbins, Jason? Reed and Ingram for Dobbins? Are we talking about Jaden Reed, who just scored 33, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 33 points? Yeah. yeah, but, you know, Jordan Love's injured. I would say, fuck that, dude. Mm, yeah. I mean, I kind of want Dobbins, but I'm not yeah, I want Dobbins, but not that bad. Dude, so I, Reed – no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, I, it, would, it would have to be like – because Evan Ingram, dude, is going to bounce – I mean, it's going to come back. He's a starting tight end. I don't know. At, no, off man. the top of my head, I'm just like, I don't think so, man. Hashtag I, I, not in my league. Yeah, I'm already negative against Dobbins anyways. We'll have to, I'll have to write that back in a minute. All right, Jason. Uh, on to the wide receivers. And I had to go looking for a wide receiver to start, Jason. I think I did. I think I had a wide receiver to start. Oh, God, dude. I said, oh, God. And this matches perfectly, dude. Do you remember that one year I owned Godwin, Jason, and you went like nuclear? Yeah, that was just like three years ago. It was, I think, it was uh, Brady's first year because I was like, "Dude, you guys don't understand how good Godwin is." And wasn't then, that been uh, three years ago? Yeah, and then Brady got there, and whoo, holy shit! So yeah. Anyways, um, I Baker Mayfield. I was all out on Godwin last year, and I was kind of talking shit about him again this year. I was not talking shit about Mike Evans. I learned my lesson. But then Jason, uh, I heard that he went back to the slot and oh. he had a great and he had a great game. You heard that. Okay. So wide receiver <laughs> eight right now. Godwin. Did you tell me that, Jason? Is that what you're saying? Plenty of times. This yeah, I, know. <laughs> I, said that, I, I don't know where I heard things, Jason. I heard like I hear shit. <laughs> well you I have heard it. I hear shit from everywhere, dude. Uh, <laughs> uh but yeah, dude. <laughs> what was what was I even oh, yeah, Godwin. So uh he is wide receiver eight right now. Top 10, man. I think Mike Evans wide receiver six or five. So two top. I mean, this is not sustainable. Uh, the, he has the highest, Jason, over and under at 51 and a half at Detroit in a dome. So in a dome, Godwin, Jason, ran 39% of uh, his routes in the slot last week. That was the highest out of any uh, Bucks wide receiver. So he's not a complete slot wide receiver. But he is the Bucks, you know, most used slot wide receiver, if that makes sense or whatever. Yeah. And a 27% target share led the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with eight targets. Eight receptions for 83 yards, man, on eight targets. So, I mean, uh, I, I went and I checked uh, when they played Detroit last year or whatever. So, he had eight targets, eight receptions this last week. Dude, he went and played at Detroit in week six, 2023, with Baker Mayfield. Six receptions on seven targets for 77 yards. I think that is his floor here, Jason. I think that, uh, you know, him playing a lot more outside and, you know, different. He did not have a great year last year. 
If you move, if you tell me Godwin's in the slot all year, I will tell you he's going to be a top 20 wide receiver at the end of the year. Yeah. So, yeah, my confidence, even though I'm not that confident on Baker Mayfield, he's making me rethink my confidence, but still. Um, and he will be seeing Amick Robertson, Amick Robertson in the slot. And he is giving up 0.25 fantasy points per route run allowed. And if you look about, and you know, there's a, some algorithm that measures uh, the strength of the route running versus the coverage or whatever. And um, Godwin's like one plus 1.26 or something. And anything over one is really good. So great matchup for Godwin. And he's back in the slot on, in the dome, Jason. So where you drafted Godwin is in your flex position-ish. You should be starting him this week, no matter what. Yes, absolutely. What was I just looking at right now? Uh, I f- because he's also playing a lot more in the slot. Did you say how many he had? He had like twenty five routes in the in the slot. That was in the top twenty. But because he's playing in the slot too, that increases your chances for yards after catch. And he had forty eight yards after catch last game, and that was in the top ten, I believe. Yes, yes, he was eighth. With 48 mm-hmm. yards after the catch. That's important. So you're already getting a point for every reception, and then you just get an additional four points because of his running after the catch. Him playing the slot makes a huge improvement in oh, his fancy value. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. I, I needed to see it to believe it, and guess what, man? We saw it. It's still not as strong as I'd want. I want to see those slot numbers up in the 50s or more. I think uh, we'll get there. I yeah. think we'll get there. And then um, Mike Evans, though, Jason, we were all talking about yards after the catch. I would bet Mike Evans averages like, 0.01 yards out. He gets he catches it and then that goes down. But it's all deep. All those balls are deep. All those balls are deep. And he's always contested. <laughs> so it's just like, I don't know, when he gets the uh, it might be about some crossing routes or something. Because he is huge. All right, man. So you gotta tell me a wide receiver to sit, Jason. I know you had all those cornerback matchups as well. Oh yeah. And this is because of the hype train, Tyler. I'm not liking it, but let's sit Brian Thomas Jr. Oh, damn. You're going to make some people upset. Well, you know, this is what happens, Tyler. The guy is projected 11 points. Last week, he led the team in receptions and was tied for targets. He caught the only receiving touchdown, and that play was crazy. Like, Lawrence, like, threw the ball in the spot before he was even there. It was a good play. Thomas was open, scored a touchdown. I get the hype, but people, we need to calm down. This is not the week that you put him into your flex. He is matching up against the Browns, the secondary that is really good, despite what you saw last week, but we'll also get into that too a little bit too. He is likely to see uh, to face off against Denzel Ward, and PFF gave Ward a 88.6 coverage grade over the last four seasons in the NFL. That is fifth best mark in the league over that spam. He's had a bad he had a bad week last week, right? Of course. He went up against, you know, CD Lamb. You may have heard of the guy. But Ward <laughs> only allows 0.19 fantasy points per route run. That's one of the best in the Damn. league. But, but honestly, it doesn't matter where this guy's gonna line up in this game. All the Brown secondary is pretty damn good, according to that chart. I mean the Browns were blown out by the Cowboys, but Dak only had 179 yards passing, and Lamb only had five receptions on 61 yards and no touchdowns. The defense did play good, but the offense lost the game. So anyway, I pause. Brian Thomas Jr. Yeah, okay, because he is. Yeah, he's, he's got the negative. Yeah, he's got like a negative score when you compare that to that. Denzel Ward, though, Jason, they all yeah, he locks down one side of the field. So if they move him around, maybe a little bit, they can get him. But yeah, when I when I saw the stat sheet, though, Jason from Jackson Jacksonville Jaguars, the Jaguars Duval count. Um, Duval, I was like, dude, they got to get Christian Kirk's going to get so much more involved, man. Like, so yeah, I mean, I think that Brian Thomas Jr. is going to be catching an occasional touchdown for the first you know half of the year. That maybe be actually (laughs) maybe take over a lot more with targets and stuff in the second half of the year. But yeah, I think that you were smart, Jason, but a lot of people are so pumped up on me because he caught that touchdown, all that preseason hype, dude. So. Uh, yeah, and I get, I get it. When I, when I saw it, I was like, I really want him to do well. He is the forgotten tiger. 
I want him to do well this year. This is not the game that I think you do that in. The over and under in this game is only 41 and a half, too. So not a lot of points are expected to be in this game. Oh, yeah. Brian Thomas, Gabe Davis. So Gabe Davis and Brian Thomas and Christian Kirk all have bad matchups, dude. Yep, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> Gabe, Davis having the, Gabe Davis there. having the worst of the, of the, of the three. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter where he lines up. They yeah. have a very good secondary. I think PFF had Denzel Washington or Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington is a great actor, by the way. Check yeah. it out. Training, training day. Remember the Titans. Anyway, Denzel Ward, I think they had him at 17th best cornerback in the league. And then Greg Newsom, the slot, I believe, the slot cornerback for the Browns, they had him at like 25th best in the league. So two cornerbacks from the Browns are in the top 30 for uh, best in the league. So it's going to be, it's pretty tough. You know what the best uh, Denzel Washington movie is, right? He got game. I used to watch that, and I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I was like I a little kid. It was always on TV for some reason. Yeah. What, what, uh, who? What? Fallen, man. Fallen. With, like, John Goodman and the devil. Oh, man. I think I... Is that where the devil also teleports when you touch him? Yeah. And then, like, you know, okay. Denzel Washington outsmarts him and smokes a cigarette with... With can't with uh, lace with poison at the I, you know what dude I shouldn't talk about this go spoiler watch, alert go watch Fallen it's a uh, Denzel Washington versus the devil all right <laughs> come on man uh, how do you say no to that Ooh, sounds pretty badass to me all right dude I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a running back to sit first Jason uh, we're gonna go sit first now and this is gonna be this is my hot take dude. I've been. I even told the guy that I was making my hamburger today. I was like, "You know what my hot take is?" And he like, like literally just blew me off. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he just asked me another question. He's like, "You know who else I drafted?" I was like, "Damn it!" <laughs> Would you respond to react to what I'm saying here, dude? <laughs> so, I'm going with. I'm going to say Jordan Mason. I'm. Oh wait, no. It's, that's our start. This is uh, Jordan Mason or, or CMC. So I don't care who plays. I'm going to sit Jordan Mason or CMC. And I was even listening to Colin Cowherd and he was like, oh, he, he was going off about how uh, the 49ers are just going to go beat up the the, uh, the Vikings. And then the guy was like, um, uh, Mc, J-Mac was like, uh, do you remember, do you know that they played last year? And he's uh, Colin Cowherd's like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course I do. Like, do you remember what happened? And he's like, uh, and he's like, uh, the, the 49ers, you know, 49ers got their ass kicked. <laughs> And so it's like, dude, you got to remember this. Uh, my my head coach, tall Sean McVay. Where did McVay come from? Shanahanahan. So, dude, they run the same system, all right? And then I've got Brian Flores. As much as you don't like Brian Flores, this fool dials up an amazing defense. We made some uh, awesome moves this uh, offseason, Jason. So Christian McCaffrey, Jordan Mason. I mean, it's like, I mean, he's like running back two or three right now. I should have. I didn't even look at it. At Minnesota, the fourth highest over and under, so middle of the pack as far as over and unders go. I am sitting them. Yeah, Mason, running back five. 28 rushes for 147 yards and one touchdown versus New York Jets. You're like, holy shit, the Jets are an amazing defense. They're, they allowed the eighth most rushing yards, Jason, per game in 2023. And then Minnesota, surprisingly, gave up the sixth fewest. So we're kind of looking at two opposite ends of the spectrum, even last year. Uh, as far as rushing defenses goes, Christian McCaffrey had 15 rushes, Jason, for 45 yards. Now he did have a touchdown and he did have three receptions for 51 yards and another touchdown in week seven, 2023. But San Francisco only scored 17 points when they played the Vikings. All right. So I don't see Jordan. I mean, Jordan Mason surprised a lot of people and actually caught some balls, but he's not going to be getting 50 receiving yards and a touchdown there, dude. And if he doesn't get that one touchdown, he's got four points. All right. So I'm just saying right now. And if you get a mix of the two, it's going to be even worse. So I love Jordan Mason. Don't get me wrong. I've talked about him for two years. He's always averaged like five yards of carry or more. But in this game right now against the Vikings, I do not like it. Uh, the Vikings held the Giants to 74 rushing total rushing yards. I mean, they're the fucking Giants. What are you going to do? But still, dude, 74 total rushing yards week one. That's the sixth best in the NFL. 
And Jason, the 49ers, they just had that tough game Monday night, opening game, opening night, dude, Monday night game. And next week, they they have a big division game at the Rams. So this is kind of like that sandwich trap game, classic trap game, where they've got to focus. They're, they're probably thinking about the Rams, man, and all this. They, they need to win and all this stuff. So everything is just indicating to me the Vikings will win this game. And I love the right the Vikings rush defense. The pass defense, not so much, man. And they've got Ayuk and Debo and Kittle. They will just pass the ball a lot. This is probably one of my favorite takes that you've done in the past three years. <laughs> what, the, what, you, what is that? Well, yeah. You said three years, and I was just like. Yeah, three years. Um, I mean, what what do I say to this? Uh, I... You got a big ball, and I appreciate that of you. And <laughs> don't, dude. I'm. You can't be dancing like that. I'm trying to think of something to say. You got a big ball. Oh, because you're you're lopsided a little bit, right? Yeah, dude. You don't understand what it's like. <laughs> so now, I mean, when you say that, I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? It's like they know the talent that they have of Mason, and then what? I mean, right now, I'm kind of getting like there's still a chance that CMC doesn't play, but what if he does? They don't want to give them a full work- workload, so they got to switch between the two, and they're already going against a good run defense. I'm Tell you, man. Something here. Yeah, I mean, if there was a bet, if like if I was betting, you know, this this would be one bet I would actually feel comfortable with going in the next week. Now, would I be surprised? Is there a chance that he gets he goes crazy? Jordan Mason does, yes, but I I don't know, man. It's not like he's the most elusive guy in the world. He, they would, they were just pounding the rock, man, and the Vikings I think can handle that. You know what's crazy is uh, PFF has the Jets as a, the best defensive line this year. As far as like creating quarterback pressures, I, I do believe that, but they weren't even good at r- the rush the rushing defense last year. So, and when they, yeah, were, they, they just, were one of the best defenses last year, they must just think they had they got a total upgrade. All right, J- Jason, give me a running back that we want to start. We want to play. You know what? I got one for you. You know what? I want to play. Let's play Josh Jacobs. Oh, hell yeah, dude. All right. He's projected 14 points versus the Eagles. He put he put up 5.3 yards per carry. His rushing yards over expected per attempt was 2.37. That was the third best of week two. Now he's home in America, in Wisconsin, in Green Bay, facing a team that allowed Joe Mixon, who has one of the most he has one of the worst efficient running metrics in the last like three seasons. Mixon rushed for 159 yards and he averaged 5.3 yards per carry, and he had a positive rushing yards over expected per attempt with 0.59. So Joe Mixon just did that to the Colts, and now the Colts got to go to Green Bay and face a top five offensive line with Josh Jacobs. The Colts' defense did not look good. They gave up seven yards per play. That's the third third worst in week one. Josh was top 10 in snaps played with 49. Next running back for the Packers had 16. So, you know, he's going to be on the field. He's going to get most of the carries, most of the opportunities. And with Malik Willis, quarterback, Sunday, I don't expect him to throw. We're going to see a ground-and-pound football game, running the running the rock all game long. So I play. Josh Jacobs. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm trying to trade for him. Um, and did you know that Jordan Love is not even rolled out for this week yet, Jason? I know. He's trying. He's messing with my head, dude. So it's like I, you, people are discounting all these players. Like, we need to write this full back about Jaden Reed. It's like, don't discount the, <laughs> the Packers players so much because uh, it could just be one week for all we know, man. That's yeah. Dude, sorry. I'm like, I'm like freaking out over this, over my secret start of the week, man. I'm like, oh my god, this is, this is crazy. It's oh. it's been said. There's already a blueprint on the internet about it, dude. You can't. I just posted on Reddit. What? What'd you say? I said hottest take of the week. Oh no, I'm talking about my secret start of the week, man. Oh, I started looking at the I look cornerback matchups. I've never seen a number so high as far as uh, points given up per route run. I was like, holy shit. Oh, God, Jason, this is going to be crazy. All right, man. Next up, let's move on to the tight ends. And I'm going to start off with the tight end that people drafted, Jason, and I told them not to. I said it. I said, don't do it. Don't do it. 
But I got the allure because Stefan Diggs left. This guy was a first round draft pick. I mean, like, dude, come on. Uh, he should be killing it. But Josh Allen does not care. And because they already have awesome knocks, Jason. So Kincaid is who I am pausing this week. And I'm not even kidding, dude. Like, this shit. This shit's real, all right? So, they drafted Coleman. Coleman at least got five targets. Kincaid, you know, Kincaid over here got, what, two? Same as Do- same as Dawson Knox, man. So, Kincaid right now is tight in 37. I mean, he was in my rankings. I think he was, I, I can't remember, outside top 10. But still, I mean, I could understand the potential that he had. So, I understand why you drafted him. But still, man, people drafted him way too high. At Miami, the second highest over and under at 48.8. So you're like, oh, dude, over and under, yes. Miami is giving up the second fewest points to tight end, Jason. They held Evan Ingram one reception, five yards. I think there was like three targets or four targets. Yeah, four targets. And then, uh, so, dude, I don't know what Miami's doing right now, but Miami's defense, they were awesome last year for a while, Jason. So they got a new defensive coordinator. Um. Vic Fangio left. Miami, ninth ninth fewest passing yards per game, I think, last year was what it was. Then Kincaid had the same amount of targets as Knox, too, which amounted to one reception, 11 yards, week one versus Arizona. And then the big thing here, Jason, is Allen threw to 10 different wide receivers. Yeah. And nine of those got receptions. So Keon Coleman got the most. He's the guy that I was actually looking for. We thought Shakur was going to be getting 10 targets, man. That is not even the case. Do you uh, the offense that like I mean I know it was valuable still, but like the offense that um, Brady ran after Randy Moss left, it was just spreading the ball around. You know who cares about that single? Per- I think it could be better for the offense, Jason, as Stephon Diggs is gone. But as far as who's going to be benefiting the, the the most, I would say no tight ends. I don't know. I would not want to own a tight end from uh, from Buffalo this year, let alone. Going up against Miami, Jason, who's been pretty tough defense for a while. Yeah, they even played good defense last week, like you like you said, against the Jaguars. It just took a half for it to happen. Jaguars didn't score. They went to the half with 17 points, and then they didn't score again for the rest yeah, of the game. They're, they're, like, I just keep on listening to these, uh, these NFL insiders. Are like, is the way that they – like Miami turned it on in the second half. Is, are they going to be playing that way for the rest of the year? Like, I guess I didn't get to watch the whole game. I just got to watch some of those highlights. Yeah. But from what I heard from people that know what they're talking about, Miami's defense was like kicking ass for a little bit for the second half. So do you have a feeling that Josh Allen's going to keep spreading the ball like that throughout the rest of the year? Yeah, except for uh, Keon, Keon Coleman. That's why I'm trying to trade for Keon Coleman. <laughs> to me, Keon, like if Shakur was ever going to be that guy, it would have happened the first week. I know that's stupid, but they, hmm. and he made a lot of great catches. Like he won that game for uh, listening to Chris. I can't remember who I was listening to. Chris Long, Chris Long, Chris Long. He was saying like he won them that game. He was the hero of that game. But look at the targets, man. So to me, the person to own there is Keon Coleman. Okay, you know I almost went the uh, my play of the week or my play tight end was going to be uh, Dawson Knox. <laughs> Dude, that'd been hilarious. Did but you it was know? just because, you know it's, because it's because he told me about Kincaid. I'm like, okay, eh, what if I just went Knox? Well, Dawson Knox had more points. He had more yards. Oh, maybe I'm not far off. Maybe I'm hinting towards something. All right, Jason, give me a tight end you want to start. Let's dig deep here, dude. Let's do Mike, my jet ski. Let's do my jet ski. Oh, that's right. Gasecki? My jet ski. Wow, wow. I wish I didn't really do that. I hate that I just did that. Wow, wow. Yeah, that was kind of weird. Anyways, he's projected five points. (laughs) Only four points last week on three receptions and four targets. He did have a 10-yard touchdown called back. Could have been maybe 15 yards, 20 yards. Anyway, it was called back. But this week, they are at the Chiefs. The Bengals are at the Chiefs, and they are expecting to play without T. Higgins again. And maybe Jamar Chase isn't football ready. I don't know. I didn't ask him. Did you? Or Chiefs defensive coordinator, What's this guy's name? Steve Spagnolia? Spagnolia? Spagnola. Spagnola. Spagnolo? I don't know, dude. <laughs> you got me messed up. Steve's, they call him Spags, but I think it's Spagnolo. I don't Spagnolo. Know. 
maybe he creates a game plan to take Chase out of the game because, you know, Chase is probably not 100%. Like what they did with Mark Andrews against the Ravens the previous Thursday. This could get ugly quick. The Bengals lost to the Patriots, who only scored 16 points. They lost to the Patriots, who only scored 16 points. That's insane. You can expect more points in this game with a 40, uh, 47.5 over and under. The Bengals will need to pass because they will, because uh, the Chiefs will stop Zach Moss on the run game. They Their defensive line is great. We saw what they did to Derrick Henry. Of course, they're going to stop Zach Moss, so they'll need to pass. Last week, the Chiefs gave up 27 points to Isaiah Likely. So, I pause my jet ski. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, you pause. No, you play my jet ski. Play. Damn it. No, you're right. I was play. like, I play. I was like I play. why do you pause? I was like, yeah, of play. course you pause him. Everybody's pausing him, Jason. You're trying to convince him otherwise. Man, we did that earlier. I said the same thing earlier before we started airing. Play, 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 play. <laughs> Bet on him. Bet hey, on man. Him. Uh, who do you, he he used to play for Miami, right? When he was actually <laughs> had some like he had some awesome games in Miami. Then I, he might have went to the Patriots. I can't remember. I think so. He has the best. Uh, what do you call it? Giddy Giddy dance of all time? <laughs> Does he really? Oh my gosh, Tyler, check this out. So I kind of want to do this uh, trade. So that guy that we were talking about earlier, he said trade Reed and Ingram for Dobbins and Kincaid. Did you write back to him? No, no, no. It's just oh, the full. I so see. Kincaid was on there too. Yeah, so that's why I'm like, I see the full thing now. And honestly, I think I would still keep Reed and Ingram. I, I do like talked- Dobbins, but yeah, Ingram is still going to get his. Yeah, yeah. I would. I would, oh, Jeez, dude. I'd probably still keep Jaden Reed. Oh, you know what? Okay, so the reason he wants to get Dobbins because he doesn't like his zero running back team. At the moment, he has Javante Williams, Chuba Hubbard, Alexander Madison. Oh, my God. Tank Bigsby and Bucky Irving. So that's yeah, why I think yeah, he's trying to get another. Make the fucking trade. Dude, yeah. I think he needs to make the trade because his wide receivers yeah. are Garrett Wilson, Marvin Harrison Jones, DJ mm. Moore, Rasheed Rice, and Brian Thomas. So, yeah. Marvin would... Harrison Jones, man. Marvin Jones yeah, and Marvin Junior. Marvin Harrison combined to one person. Fucking Marvin, Marvin Harrison. Feet tall. Jones. <laughs> 450 pounds ultimate junior right. but yeah so i'm gonna tell him to do the trade because i would say not to but since he needs his running back to do it but yep i think so that's okay if, if it's that close of a trade anyways whatever yeah that's good that's good all right jason secrets starts of the week actually you know what we're just gonna go with one big secret and then we'll talk about some people i like because because really, this one's just kind of blowing my mind. All right. So, <laughs> okay. Did you hear the Devon Villet, Jason? Is that like a a seafood dish? <laughs> Isn't that the guy that gets your keys? Uh, <laughs> all right, man. This is that twenty, the twenty-seven year old rookie for the fucking Broncos, right? He had eight. He had eight receptions on eight targets last week, Jason. Did you know that? I don't even know who this guy is, to be honest. Dude, he's a, he's a, let me see. Is he the slot receiver? He is the slot receiver. And when when I say slot, Jason, it's 73% of the time for Bo Nix. Bo Nix. Right now, when I think about Bo Nix, I just think about a ton of short completions right now. So eight receptions, eight targets, slot receiver, Bo Nix, Jason. And he's in the matchup he's going against. I watched this game. Dude, Pittsburgh's defense looked great. The two cornerbacks for defense or for their defense is awesome. Their slot corner, Jason, gives up 0.45 fantasy points per route run. I literally don't see a higher number on this. <laughs> I don't even see okay. a higher number. So uh, this matchup for Valet, dude, if you don't have a flex, you can literally put this guy in. And if it's PPR, dude, oh, my God, even half PPR, you will get 10-plus points from this guy. And he is, I think he's like 2% owned, man, or 1% owned. I can't even remember. So that is my um, that is my secret start of the week, Jason. I mean, Beanie Bishop is who he's going against, the slot cornerback. 77% of the time, dude. That's crazy. So, yeah, if I didn't have so many flyers everywhere else, dude, I would literally think about, I think this guy is a better, like this guy is what I wanted uh, Shalil, Shakur, Khalil Shakur to be, Jason. Just a slot machine. Not so yeah. much. And then, how do you feel about that, Jason? 
Um, I think the Broncos are going to have to pass a lot against the Steelers. And if it's anything like how it was against uh, the Seahawks, and, yeah. he's going to get another eight receptions. And he's not going to have a lot of time either because TJ Watt was like, dude, that that they were getting at. Um, oh, Christian, yeah. Or, or not Christian. Yeah, or, or defensive Cousins. player of the year already, man. Yeah, and then lastly, Jason, I picked this guy up. I talked about him. Adonai Mitchell, dude, if he's out there on your waiver wire, like I said, the fastest rookie, fastest Xavier worthy. And, dude, Anthony Richardson's arm is insane. It's fucking crazy. So I'm just taking – just take – and what, what just kind of solidified it for me, he is their slot receiver, Jason. 44% of the time, that is way more than any other, other wide receivers. So the fastest rookie, he's like a second-round draft pick. He's huge, and he's playing slot, Jason. So – and like I said, he missed out on a couple huge throws. He's going to get the slot cornerbacks, and he's the fucking fastest dude. So I'm holding on just a little bit to Adonai Mitchell for upside. It's pretty interesting because I don't think he was targeted when he was in the slot. Because that is interesting. They- That's some research that I wish I had a team for, Jason. I just I look at his targets. I look right, at yeah. Percentage. No, I, to- I totally get it. It's just I remember watching that game, and he- it was like, Dude, he is pretty quick, man. At one of these oh, times, he starts off in the slot, Jason, and then he runs seam routes. See ya. Because we already know Richardson is going to throw the ball 70 yards with just Dude. a flack of the wrists. So, yeah, and he's going against um, Green Bay's pretty much weakest wide receiver, or one of their weak cornerbacks. So, I mean, he's giving up. They're, they have a cornerback just to play slot. Gives up 0.26 points per fan, you know, whatever. So, a decent matchup for Adane Mitchell. And I heard about all those big bombs he missed last week. Give them to me. Yeah. Quarterback right, Jason. Too. Yeah. Hey, man, that is the show. Hopefully you can watch us this time. I don't even know. Who knows, dude, if it's just audio or not, Jason. But, hey, <laughs> dude, hopefully we earned a thumbs up. Hopefully we earned a subscription. Remember what we said earlier, man. We need your help. Please help us out. There is a Patreon. Let's see. We got live drinking show, dude, where you can interact with us and ask all the questions you want. I'm going to respond to this dude right now, Jason. Please send us out. Yeah, so Tyler said it. We got a live episode coming Fridays or normally at 6 o'clock. Maybe a little bit late because you got to put the little eight-month-year-old to bed. It's not very easy. Any dad tips, uh, let me know. Uh, and we're doing the rankings, ranking episodes. We share both our rankings, do like an average. And then if you have any questions, ask us. We'll do our best to make sure that you win this week. If we lose, we always blame Tyler. That's that's how it is. I'm sorry. That's just how, how it goes. Um, so, yeah, I'll talk to you in those episodes. And, oh, make sure to catch out Tyler's waiver show Sunday. It's very important that you do. Deuces. This is the Fantasy Red Zone, and we appreciate you.